from Greenhouse Megastore and today we have an exciting build going on. We're putting up a 1200 series cold frame of ours and we're going to show you how to lay out the foundation and the string lines and punch the holes for the post so you can get a good start on your building. first thing you'll need to do when beginning to lay out your build site is to locate the corners and mark out a rough outline of the building footprint. This is so you can ensure that the site you have chosen is clear of any obstacles and underground utilities. After driving a stake at the first corner, proceed to measure the width and length, loosely setting a stake at each location. Once the corner stakes are set, you can take diagonal measurements to make sure the corners are aligned and square. Your instruction manual should list the total corner to corner diagonal measurement needed for your building. You may also choose, as we did, to use rope and or marking paint to mark the outline of your building. This takes the guesswork out of the next step, clearing ground. Depending on the size of your building, you may be able to clear ground using simple hand tools such as shovels and rakes. However, for larger projects and ease of effort, consider renting equipment as we have done. We commonly use wheeled or track skid steers with bucket attachments for this purpose. This works great because this equipment can later be used to drill the footings required to set posts for your building. Finally, once your ground is clear of sod and debris, a minimum 4 inch layer of 3 quarter to 1 inch gravel can be placed, tamped, and roughly leveled at the site. You don't need to perfectly level this surface, as you will be using survey equipment to shoot grade, place battens, and set string lines. To begin, drive batten boards at the corners of your building at least 4 feet away from the building footprint. A batten board consists of two or more uprights and a cross member, and the intention is for your batten board to straddle your corner location so that it can be marked on the cross member in a string line set to it. After you have set batten uprights in all corners, you will then use a survey transit to shoot grade. Grade is just an arbitrary location above ground level that you'll soon set string lines at, and eventually use to set posts with. But the key here is you're using the transit to ensure grade is level across the whole build site. Once your battens are set, you can mark them at the appropriate length and width. An important note! When marking your string lines, remember to offset them by the total width of a single column post from your building. This is done so that the columns can be set inside the string lines without any deflection in the line. String lines are a bit complicated to cover completely in this video, so rather than try, we highly recommend checking out the resources on screen and in the video description below for more information on setting lines. Once lines are set, you can once again ensure the diagonal measurement matches the one in your manual. Doing this ensures your building is square and will save you a mountain of headaches down the line. After your lines are all set and the building square, the last thing to do is mark post locations on the string using marker and on the ground using marking paint. Now you're probably on to day two, digging holes. First, take down your string lines and carefully set them aside. You'll be using them again later. Using a skid steer with an auger bit of 12 to 24 inches in diameter, proceed to drill holes to the specified depth in your manual. Our location required peered footings of 42 inches depth, but your location may be different. Be sure to check and dig accordingly. Lastly, Make sure your auger drill is straight and that your hole is perpendicular to the ground as possible. Angled, uneven holes may make setting posts impossible. Before pouring any concrete, mark your posts to the proper depth or height. For example, at a grade of 4 inches above the ground and a required depth of 42 inches, your post would be marked at 46 inches up from the bottom. 
You will actually be wet setting the posts, which means you are pressing them into wet concrete and it will be firm enough to hold the post vertically in place. We recommend using a 2.5 slump concrete mix. Slump is just a way of measuring water content in the mix. The higher the number, the more water in the mix, the more runny it will be. When in doubt, get a mix that is just slightly runnier than you'd like. It's much easier to wait a little for concrete to dry than it is to hammer posts into hardened concrete. Quickly but carefully move your way around the building, setting each post in concrete and leveling it in both directions. When you are complete, a simple test to ensure you've got all your posts level is to walk to the end of the post run, close one eye, and look down it. You should see only one post. There should not be any deflection and no post obviously out of level with the others. This simple eyeball test will tell you immediately if you've got a rogue post. Once complete, allow the footings to set overnight before moving any further into the build process. Like and subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and go check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest for more tips, tricks, and guides to keep you growing.